Hey guys, uh, today I want to talk to you about kind of a modern Nesma trio or trilogy or whatever you want to call it. So let's start out real quick. Who was Nesma? He was a guy, George Washington Sear. He lived in the 1800s and he was known in the time for being a great outdoor adventurer. He wrote for uh, Forest and Stream Magazine, which eventually became Field and Stream. And then he eventually published the book Woodcraft uh, just a few years before his death which kind of became, you know, if you will, the first book about bushcraft. And it, actually a lot of the writings ended up making its way into the Boy Scouts and all the Boy Scout manuals and all that. His influence in America is huge when it comes to kind of outdoor adventure. He's very famous for being kind of the first ultralight canoeer, the first ultralight kind of gear advocate. And... Uh, all around, you know, he, he adventured his entire life and he was a real tiny guy, like a hundred and something pounds, only five foot. So he was a tiny guy. He was famous for doing uh, self-guided tours. You know, he didn't believe in the time. People paid a lot of money for guides. He did this stuff and was an advocate of doing it, you know, yourself and having that adventure and being outside because it was good for your health because he also had tuberculosis. So that's who he was. Now he wrote Woodcraft and it's been in print for a hundred years and people have taken this thing as the bible when it comes to outdoor stuff and of course you know it is a little dated things have changed and over the years people have just agonized over Nesmuk's uh, choice of cutting tools and he only really spends maybe two pages in his book talking about these tools but literally for you know, a hundred years people have debated and argued and tried to recreate his system to the best of their ability. And lots of times it ends up costing people a lot of money and time and they end up not being happy with it. So I wanted to go over and do a quick kind of Nesmic trio as I see it nowadays with modern production and modern gear and talk about why I chose it versus what he chose back in the day and uh, how this would fit all his, if he were alive today, I think this stuff would fit his needs and work quite well for him. So let's start out. What did he expect? Number one, he expected things to be of very high quality. He expected them to be built of very good materials, you know, the best available, and things that would last long and uh, be very good. He was very important, and in the book he mentioned numerous times how important it is to buy quality not to buy cheap things. He also mentions that some of these things he experimented with for a long time. It took him ages to find the right gear and the right equipment for him. And, uh, you know, I think there's even one point where he kind of talks about, you know, like not being discouraged because you haven't found the right gear yet. That it's okay to experiment. It's okay to, you know, try different things out. So, he talks about his three tools, which were a small hatchet, a folding knife, and a hunting style blade. And, well, we'll start out with the hatchet, because the hatchet is what he said was most important to his system. His hatchet was a double bit, small belt axe. Had about a 12 to 14 inch handle, double bit. He actually had it custom made. He, he recounts in the book saying that he tried just numerous numerous hatchets was never happy he wanted the double bit because he wanted basically a coarse edge for going through hard knots and also to use when processing animals for getting through like pelvises and things like that and he wanted a really super fine edge for felling trees and carving and things you know things of that nature so he ends up describing it, it took him forever he ended up having to pay someone to basically custom make it from like a wooden mold that he made. And later on in the book, he talks about having that hatchet for like 30 something years and, and how important it was to him. Now, here we are modern day. What have I picked? I picked the hardcore hatchet from the guys at Hardcore Hammers. And the reason why I picked it is I think it falls in line with his philosophy. Number one, it's a small belt style hatchet. It's an 18 inch handle, but you can also get these in 14. It's made of a good, you know, straight grained hickory. 
The head is, I think, 1085 carbon steel, but it's a really good carbon steel. It's heat treated excellently and has a really good edge profile. Now, I did consider many, many other hatchets when it came to this, uh, putting this trio together. And to be honest, a lot of the Condor stuff, you know, I liked it, but they were using 1055 steel, 1045 steel. That's not what he would have went for. He would have wanted the better steel. So I decided to go with the, uh, the hardcore hatchet. Now you're going to say, I can feel it already. What about the Grand Fours? What about the Wetterlings? I wanted to keep the price down, guys. You know, the, the Grand Fours and the Wetterlings are not something everyone can afford. Plus, you know, as much as everybody loves them, they do have some QC issues these days. I see a lot of postings about them chipping and breaking and not being heat treated properly. So take it as what you will. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying when it comes down to it, this thing is small, lightweight, packable. It's only about a pound and a half. And I like the idea of the longer handle on the small head. You can't get that with the Wetterlings or the Grand Force. They have their hatchets have the shorter handles to them. And plus this has a very nice thin edge to it. It has a very thin profile and I think that will be to his liking because he does describe the one half of the double bit as having a very thin profile and the most production actions in the time had were way too thick for his liking. So being this is so thin has that nice gentle you know slope going up to the eye I think it's something he would have used and enjoyed, particularly over the more expensive Wetterlings and all that, because he does often talk about buying expensive gear that really just is unnecessary. He talks a lot about that with the, the hunting knife, about spending a lot of money on things that just weren't the greatest, and I think this fits the bill. It's a $40 item, so I think it's a little more affordable, and... Uh, a little easier to use it has a little more versatility with that long handle next we'll go into the hunting style knife now he used his own custom knife which that pattern is now referred to as the Nesmic style uh, condor makes one plenty of people make them they've been you know people have been making them for as long as that book has been out and he describes the most important things to the knife as being something that would be used for skinning game, for eating, for slicing meat, things of that nature. He does not describe the knife as being something to be used for carving or whittling or anything like that. He says that he has had a very thin blade, which allowed it to have a very sharp edge, and that uh, it was a really nice carbon steel. Now, from other things I've read, some other kind of backup information to the book, I guess his knife also was a uh, leather handle, so it did have a hidden tang. Now, I would have assumed at the time he would have wanted something with a full tang, but from the reading and research I've done, it was actually a, uh, a hidden tang knife with a leather washer handle, which kind of led me to the Mora. Now, here is the companion. It's... I really don't think this is the best choice of a knife for this kit. To be honest, but going through my, my fixed blade knives, I really didn't have what I thought was the perfect knife for this situation. But I thought the Mora kind of came close. These things are damn near indestructible, which is what he would have liked. They're inexpensive despite being indestructible. There are no frills, very plain, simple, and I think he would have liked that. You know, he wouldn't have wanted the big beckers. He wouldn't have bonded the beckers and the k-bars and things like that. He actually talks down about the Bowie style blades and things like that. He liked that small. He described it as being a five inch blade. This is pretty close. Pretty small, thinner, you know. Ideally, I would like something with a, a full flat grind, but I don't have anything in carbon steel to be honest. So I'm going to start looking through and see if I can find something that fits the bill a little bit better. But with what I have right now, I think this Mora would have been just fine. When it comes to processing game, eating, slicing meat, this is absolutely perfect. And you can also use it for whittling and other tools like that if you really wanted to. But Nesmic did all that with the hatchet. He was a firm believer that 
most of his camp chores were done with the hatchet. So bear that in mind. That was his thing. The hatchet was the primary tool. Knife was the secondary when it came to eating and processing game. And lastly was the folding knife. Now he used what would now be known as a moose pattern knife. It has uh, two blades, one on each end, and uh, the blades were kind of a, a thicker, a little more stout blade to them. And it doesn't describe much else about the, the folding knife. It says that he went through a lot of them, and he tr basically just picked the one he found that was the most sturdy that he could find. And he doesn't really describe how he used it, I can only assume that it would be for whittling, carving, making notches, making camp furniture. He talks a lot about making camp furniture, making you know things for your fires, making shelter, all that jazz. I think the, the knife would have been that tool for that. Now, here's the area where I think we have a lot more leeway. We have so much better pocket knives than Nesmuk did in his time. I'm sure back then, you know, the, he would have been forced to use a carbon steel. It probably had pretty crude locking mechanisms. Who knows? I don't think it was very good. I think Nesmic would have been pleased with 99% of the knives that we have in production nowadays. At least not the tactical thicker blade stuff. I think, you know, he really shied away from thicker blades because they do have that, you know, keep, you know, a little tougher to get those really, really super sharp edges on them. So looking to the folding knives, I wanted something that was tough, rough, had two blades, and uh, kind of a full flat grind. So of course, initially I looked at the spider codes, and I thought, you know, but they only have the one blade, at least most of them. I looked at Swiss Army knives, and some of the older models I have, I kind of, uh, you know, I just don't know if these would have been tough enough for him. And then I looked at this new redesigned uh, standard issue soldier. And I thought, okay, this is a pretty tough knife. It's got a pretty good thick blade. And it has the saw. And I kind of thought about that. And would he like the saw? I think at the time they didn't have little folding saws like that. And no way they could be added into a small folding knife. But I think in the modern area with our production, I think he would have been more interested in something like this than... A traditional folder. Could be wrong. He may be a huge fan of the Buck 110. We don't know. But my guess, the utility of this, he would have liked it. Now this is a, you know, back then everything would have been carbon steel. This is a uh, stainless, but it's actually a very good steel. The uh, Victorinox stuff always used very good steel, very good heat treat, very good quality with them. And I think this is a no exception. I think he would have liked it. I think the blade size is nice. Nice. The half serrated he would have liked. With the chisel edge, it would have made it very easy to sharpen. And the little saw, would have. I think he would have found a lot of use for, for making notches and creating things like furniture and, and all that. Because being he did pretty much make everything he needed around the camp when it came to chairs and... Uh, spindles for the fires to cook over, things like that. He would have had to do a lot of uh, small carving notches, things like that, you know, to put lashings in, to make shelters and whatnot. I think this would have really fit the bill. I think it would have been uh, something he would have really uh, enjoyed. Now, granted, like I said, I think he would have been happy with a lot of knives. I think the quality of modern folders are, are really good compared to what he was dealing with back then. But I think given the tasks that he would have completed, what he would have done, this would have been something he would have been looking for. I think if not this, he would have been looking at something like a buck 110. He would have been looking at, uh, you know, maybe something like a Barlow knife or something like that. He would have wanted that uh, flat ground blade, you know, something sharp, good steel, good quality. So there it is, guys. My modern Nesma Trilogy. You know, kind of put this together. Is this perfect for everyone? No. Is it what I'm leaning towards being a good set? Yes, I think it fits that bill. Everything's small. Everything's lightweight. Made of good materials. And uh, are items that should last a long, long time under hard use. So I do think uh, this is a good representation of a modern system. And uh, 
there you go. Um, I'm gonna do a couple more of these over time. I think I'm going to uh, do a couple different ones with a couple different styles and put them together. I'm gonna put, I think, another one with some vintage stuff out of like the 50s, 60s, and you know, maybe a few others with, with bigger, thicker, you know, kind of a little more uh, tactical kind of stuff. But this is where we're starting, guys. So, hope you enjoyed it.